You know, I should probably check on uh, the world, see how everything's going in film news and stuff like that. Oh my god! Alfred Molina is supposed to be uh, Dr. Octopus in the new Spider-Man movie. Oh, okay. Ah, that's cool. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. What is going on? My name is Brandon Sella, and uh, thank you for tuning in again to An Adventure in Art House Cinema. Last time, we checked out Twin Peaks Fire Walk With Me, that big old dumpster fire of a movie. But I decided, you know, let me take a break. I know I was supposed to go to, like, the Kurosawa movies and get back to that, but I need kind of a refresh, kind of like a, a new start to stuff. Uh, and my DVR is full, so, you know, sue me. Uh, so I was going through that stuff, and I thought, okay, what counts as an art house movie? Movie. And then I was like, ah, American Beauty. Okay, I've, I've heard about that movie, but I haven't really, you know, I haven't seen much. I've seen like little clips and little stills, like about the rose petals and stuff like that. And I go, ah, you know, maybe, maybe that could be good. And I was pleasantly surprised at this movie. So today we are going to talk about Sam Mendes's American Beauty. Sam Mendes? Sam Mendes's. Sam. Sam Mendes. Oh, I'll put it here. Sam Sam Mendes, American Beauty. Bam. So American Beauty follows the story of Lester Burnham, played by Kevin Spacey, who is not controversial in any way, and uh, ale and and allegedly he has done nothing wrong. Allegedly he is he cleans the whistle. There's nothing controversial about him. And <laughs> anyway, aside from that awkward moment, uh, yeah. So it follows uh, Lester Burnham. Uh, just to get this out of the way, uh, I'm going to be praising uh, Kevin Spacey's performance as Lester Burnham and talking talking about his performance. I am separating the two of them as you know, character and actor. So just getting that out of the way, it's it's kind of awkward to talk about it, especially this movie. It's. Uh, yeah, it, uh, American Beauty is not necessarily aged the best, especially when it comes to the lead. Um, but it is it is what it is. It's unfortunate because it's such a great movie. It basically the story follows this guy Lester, uh, and he's kind of he's kind of a punk. He's kind of like a, not a punk. What's the proper term? I would say there's a colloquial term that sounds like that sounds like mimp but i don't know if it's like youtube friendly or if it would be correct in this sense but he's kind of like a, a putz there you go that's the right word uh you know kevin spacey's character is kind of a putz um he's being dragged around by uh by his wife carol who's played by annette benning uh and he doesn't have a good relationship with his daughter played by thora birch his daughter jane uh and he's just kind of been been beaten down by himself and by the way that he's been treated and by and by life and so he's trying to to take his life back in a way and the whole movie kind of follows him and the effect that he creates around him because it's not so much that he changes but he changes and it affects everything else that then changes around him and kind of comes back to him. I'm not going to spoil much, but it's it's a movie where you see a domino effect, if you will, of just what happens when what, when something or someone changes and how that affects everything else. And that's essentially the story. It's a it's a black comedy or like a, a, a dark comedy. I forget the the actual term is I think black comedy, but it's a tragic story that's also very hilarious and it's it's such a great movie because it's able to blend so many different elements of both comedy of drama of kind of suspense elements and it and it builds these characters that are so grounded in reality but at the same time are also very ridiculous i don't know about you but i've found that with a lot of i say hollywood movies let's call it that when you have a lead actor or lead actress that is very bombastic and is praised for a great performance, the performance itself feels a little off. It feels a bit cartoony or kind of just off in a way. With the performances in American Beauty, it's played so straight but somehow is still entertaining. It's a hilarious movie 
that still is able to ride that line of being hilarious and have great performances at the same time. It's really a marvel to see because a lot of times that doesn't work or a lot of times one can kind of overlap the other or you know it's it comes off as too fake or it's not as funny and then it just becomes serious this movie is both funny but also very tragic and i think that adds to i think that's the selling point of of this film the film also deals with a lot of very complex themes there's stuff about abuse there's stuff about uh, separation you know a fractured family uh sexuality um uh, older uh, uh and, and younger attraction which is not awkward at all considering the lead actor not not awkward in the slightest it's not like this movie aged very poorly because of various allegations uh, towards the lead actor. It's not like any of that happened. No, not at all. Uh, another awkward part about it is that, that it's it's very awkward looking at that now, but if you can separate yourself from the reality of the situation and just see these characters, it's still, it's still awkward because you're dealing with very complex sub subject matter and the film has a lot of stuff to say where it's not so much, it's, it's very much that they kind of they let you analyze what's going on and while the characters kind of go in a certain direction and the film aims at a certain certain direction when it comes to like right and wrong in a way or it comes to dynamics with these intense situations, it does not in a way where you still have characters that are very much human and real that you can sympathize with. Annette Benning's performance really grounds this and really makes it I think a masterpiece of a film because if you had Annette Bening played by really any other actress at that time of, e of equal like per performance or equal talent or equal stardom, they they wouldn't bring it home as Annette Bening does because she just makes that character work and makes that character feel so like so tragic and so okay like i understand what's going on with this character and same thing with thora birch who plays the daughter that you know there are a lot of these performances that ground it that ground the film and let you see the other perspectives and let you see and not in a way that is that too distracting as with other films it really gives you the full perspective of what things are going on without you getting lost in different parts of the film and different characters and it's all still centered around this town this this really just two families it's really like it's like eight characters and they're all awesome they're, they all have varying levels of of like great scenes and they're all kind of hold their own in these different scenes and it's just a it's a joy to watch but it's also super dramatic and super intense again i can't say enough how sam mendes is able to parlay both the funny and the and the drama all together and mind you this is his first movie this is his first directorial feature film he would go on to make like Skyfall, Spectre, and then 1917 is his most famous recent one. But this is his first movie. Like, you know, that's that's the that's the dream is to have a movie like this be, you know, you know, others will say like Reservoir Dogs and some of these other great di directorial debuts, but like this is a masterpiece right out of the gate you know and I, I, that's that just blows me away the, for, in basketball terms it's like when will chamberlain uh came into the league in 1960 and won the mvp like you just don't it just doesn't happen it's a it's a build-up even with like some of the greats like scorsese and some and some of these guys where you know okay yeah mean streets is good but like taxi driver is is right there he, sam Mendes just came in and was like now nah, y'all i'm gonna make i'm gonna make a masterpiece and bam and it's like Holy sh**, dude, like you're, that's insane. So yeah, technically this film has no flaws whatsoever. Um, it's not the sexy cinematography of a Kubrick film or even like 1917 where it, the selling point is the cinematography. This film is very much the drama and the shots just are to present the story as best they can. There are some great kind of symbolic shots here and there, and then the dream sequences are very well shot, and you could tell like, oh man, this is this is just great filmmaking. But for the most part, it's good, 
cinematography that lets you really take in everything and lets you see what you want to see. In fact, now that I think about it, no, actually that's great cinematography because now that I think about some of the shots and you go, man, like they really were able to tell the story visually and be able to show, especially towards the end of the movie, not to spoil a lot of things, but there are just some great um, visual shots that let you know what's happening, uh, let you really digest moments without really anything to happen. There's some great wide shots that, that really let you take in the atmosphere and the editing is great just in terms of pacing and just really letting scenes kind of play out and being able to cut to different shots and really show what's going on and let scenes breathe because the actors are going to just knock scenes out of the park. It's it's really on the editor to just kind of go, okay, let's manage this, let's put this here and kind of let things breathe and stuff. So that to me is was incredible about the film. As the light coming into my window blinds my eye, I'm kind of reminded that it's, this film is like, it's just so great. It's not so much that I can talk about because you got, really have to see it for yourself. I recommend it for really anyone. It may, it may not be an art house pick, but it's, the style is just so great that I just wanted to include it here and it's really a film that when you see it or when you see the cover or you kind of glance at it, you go, eh, maybe this, this isn't that good. This was, this was my opinion on it for a while that you go, oh, okay, I'll lump this in with a lot of the other great movies like, uh, I don't know, Being John Malkovich and some of these other picks from the late 90s. Talking about that, um, I can, I've now completed the, um, the, the quadruple-ology, the qu quality or whatever of 1999 films about a depressed guy at work because you had office space you had the matrix you had oh my god there was a there was a third one you had office oh yeah so office space the matrix and American Beauty. All of these came out in 99. I don't know what it was if like the studios were just like, well, part of it was from different explanations and I'll throw in, uh, I think Ed Norton explained it about how the studios at the time were kind of giving different directors uh, more of a chance or they were letting kind of smaller studios go and do their own thing. It was a combination of, of a few events that happened there, but it all, all films about like, oh my God, this corporate job sucks and I hate it and here's a movie. And it's all in different forms and different variations. But yeah, so that's a movie marathon if you want, like do, do like Office Space, Matrix, and then American Beauty because all four of them in varying degrees are awesome and American Beauty fits around along with them. Uh, every, all the praises that this film gets is completely justified. I, I don't have anything else to say. This is gonna be kind of a shorter review because there's not really much to talk about. I go see it, uh, it's rated R. Um, you know, I wouldn't recommend it to kids, obviously. I wouldn't re recommend it to um, people just getting in to new films and maybe like, you know, just showing them this would be kind of a turnoff. I would say if you, if you're watching films and this is kind of your first foray into, I guess the, the filmmakers' favorite films, stuff like I don't know how to describe it because it, there are certain tiers to like how you break down films. When you get into like Kurosawa levels, this is I think a level right above Kurosawa. If we're talking about how deep this iceberg goes, where. As the where American Beauty and some of these other films like Fight Club for instance kind of fit in into films that you watch before you get really into the deep of stuff and I'm happy that I was able to to watch this this film is is tremendous it's I mean if I'm going through my list it's probably one of the greatest 90s films of all time I highly recommend it like you know go check it out if it's on if it's on Showtime or, or whatever record it if it's on some streaming service go ahead record it as I'm being blasted by the sun it's my oh my god I'm getting blinded uh, so please go ahead and check this film out it's tremendous uh, as you know it's 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 great I can't say anything else. I will be back next time to talk about, uh, to finally talk about an Akira Kurosawa film. I'm gonna try and knock them all out. I'm going to start going through, I think Ikiru is the next film. So 
Hopefully, I will actually stick with that. If not, I'll go to some other crap or something. So, definitely check that out. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and uh, have a great day. Thanks for, thanks for coming by.